Okay, actually, uh, if it's okay, we can start earlier. And well, this is a pretty informative session, so let us start earlier. So we have um, dozens of slides. Actually, it's pretty bounty, and um, well, I will do the first part, and Kevin will responsible for the second half. So, starting from my parts, uh, I'll like to start, if it's okay, start from now, and uh, I won't go into great details due to time limits if you're interested. Actually, we have a video recorded, and if you're interested, then you can follow us on uh, Ben Chu Shu Linux, uh, you can follow our um, communities to it. And actually, uh, in the case M, well, this is not official start yet, just chatting. Well, personally, I think this is pretty useful, especially for the production um, development. Well, AI and clouds are our buzzwords now, but um, for the foundation of this platform, it's Linux. Linux. The building bricks is still Linux, and some of the organizations are still need supports from uh, Linux. And if you're using Linux, then that means you're likely to run into panic and crash. So we know that um, that there are panics in different ways. And so today I'm going to talk about it. I think this is the right topic for today. Well, at the beginning, I would like to spend several minutes on uh, X64 and 86 and the mainstreams are these two structs so I pick one of them to focus on today so we talk about basically a mechanism or a methodology well so if you develop a, develop a hang of it then you will know their structure better I have a lot of slides so I'll just skip the uh, self intro and Ben Shu so we talk about the uh, practicing Linux crash and panic issue on production and cloud server. So for my part, I would like to introduce the case in cache. I would like to have a brief introduction and we have nine practicing examples. I will briefly go through eight examples. And the final one, the ninth one, will be very complicated and will be responsible by Kevin. And so why do we need KSAP? Uh, Linux has been developed from, uh, for 28 years. It's pretty strong, pretty robust. And have you ever seen a black screen uh, in Linux? Well, I think it's not frequently seen. And if we develop, if we deploy it, on large scale, then it's possibility. There's the possibility of black scale. So we're still uh, considering the reliance of this uh, system. And if we run the test, then then you will f find the possibility of uh, crashing the whole system. So why? Why uh, the panic in the system? Well. So I think this is how we develop KSM page. KSM, what's KSM? And KSM is what we used in when we have a panic. Uh, then we will develop a screenshots and we will save it. Later, we will restore uh, the situation and find clues. It's like what the police do at the murder scene. We will save the crash scene and then we'll, for later research and for maintenance and um, developers, especially for embedded systems and for smartphones, these developers and uh, the personnel working on the optimization of products, they also need KSM, especially for uh, physical devices. And uh, when your system is not responding, we will use KSM. So it's pretty handy, and your CPU and fixed and bust might cast a panic in the system. 
and they are not responding to reboots, so KSM is coming into play. So, why do we need to provide you with a very good screenshots for research later? Well, if you're working on Linux, if you're developing Linux, including operation and management, and cloud provider, and totally all these relevant personnel, they will have to know KSM better. This is a struct for KSM. When we have a crash, we have two cores. One is called production core, and the other is capturing core. And they will use KSEC to capture the cores of the crash. They will switch and develop a screenshots of the memory and load it into local or network disk and how can we provoke it we have multiple ways you can do it manually and you can also do it in a system you can set a kernel panic watchdog or, or shock log off and or wolf memory etc will all works and if one of our system is blocked it's a core trace that's commonly seen for 120 seconds. Well, it's probably a deadlock or other things. So if you're using KSM, then you can better solve this problem. So you would know who has the lock, who's waiting on the lock. We will use KSM to learn these informations. And also, if we want to develop a KSM, then we will develop it on, deploy it on server and here it's my recommendation is to use the x68 server so it's pretty new and it's pretty solid not easy to break and and also we can develop it on arm 64 platform and arm 64 platform is commonly used now and we have a experiment platform with 5.0 and ARM64 and this embedded platform enable you to run all the tests that you want. How can we trigger in KSM manually? This is how to do it. Uh, after KSM, this graphic shows you how to use the Max5 to write the memory documents and this is using the crash tool to do the VM call and if we're developing the DAM data then this is pretty handy as a tool we have a dozen of orders that you can follow and starting from here this, this is an example roughly we have nine listed here due to time sensitivity i'll go through several of them first it's pretty simple oop error and um, this is the whole analysis process and this is how we're analyzing core trace for example this is the parameter the first one and this is the course this is the course for the crash in kernel and you can read it if you're interested after the session and this is how we run the analysis so due to time sensitivity I'll just skip and this is how we check on the second parameter uh, test number two is how we have access to a deleted list and restore the process of panic and experiment experiment number three is like experiment number one and this is how we visit a non-existing non page and this is a bug and also when we're developing a driver if we use a regular map this is what happened basically we're creating a an issue and we add one parameter in experimental 5 compared with experimental 4 and let's say the hardware 
is not on the want to be status or ideal status, then there is a that log. Then a KSM can capture the needed information. Experimental six is a bit like. ARM um, 64 computing value, and we have to analyze on the functional um, functional stacks, and it's better uh, for you to understand the functional stacks relations. So you can read through the handbooks of ARM 64. So. This is the uh, functional scheduling of ARM64, and this is how we organize the stacks, and this is the graphics. This is um, each stack, and they have FP and LR, and how we store it, and this is how we finish the computing, and we have several equations. Um, this is preconditions based on which we can calculate and compute the relations in KSM. Due to time limits, uh, I will just skip. This is how can we come up with the relations of functional scheduling. And experiment number seven is like this. So how can we know each parameter, its location in each stacks? This is very important for our on-site analysis. So first, we have to understand ARM64 uh, and their stacks. And we have to also um, deduct on the parameters based on an um, recursive analysis, and we have to compute or calculate on the location of each stacks. And this is before and after the experiment. This experiment is about how can we come up with the second and the third parameters and their exact values. This is from my previous slides and how can we get the core trays and find the um, code of compilation and how can we locate the second parameters and this is ARM64 stack layout so only five minutes so time is limited I will skip and experiment 8 is pretty complicated it's remotely uh, related with what Kevin is about to talk and how can we use KSM and use stacks to get the value of parameters and then we'll know who's the holder of the deadlock. So KSM is the key to solve the deadlock. We can basically get every information we need in the analysis process. And this is a self-developed experiment by myself. And we now get the rewrite lock from MNS and PS thread. We'll also need to get the semaphore uh, rewrite lock. And if we have the two um, threads going on simultaneously, then there is a crash. Then how can we analyze on this example? So briefly, um, this is pretty lengthy, and we can see that in PSME we have four threads and non-traceable. We can analyze it one by one. Mainly, we will use this compilation codes to deduct on the clues that you want to find, and you will find the location uh, of this clue in different stacks, and you analyze the logs, and you have to know uh, the logs very well, and if you don't have a better understanding about the real-life logging, you can read on the blue bubbles. So I will skip this part due to time limitation. And this is analyzing on the test 
process of treads. This is the call trace. We have a tread PIT number and we have circled it and this is how the test treads get the lock in. We are in analyzing the uh, compiling code and we're also using the features of ARM64. For example, ARM64 have um, X19 to X28 temporary change. We will have to save it for further analysis. We'll have two minutes, so skip it. Also, we have Kodam. We analyzed each thread one by one. See the exact location of that log, and later Kevin is going to talk about the same thing. So, sorry, uh, due to time limit, so skip these parts, and you can read it from the graphic on site. This is my self-developed uh, threads and how it became a deadlock. Briefly, this is summarization. KSM can help us to solve the blackout, the black screen uh, issue, and you had to know the crash tool and how to use it. And you will have to learn the basic process of an analysis using crash tools, and you will have to locate the parameters by compiling code and solve problems by doing this and then there will be no black screen for you and now let's invite Kevin an expert on kernel and uh, he will talk about a copper level deadlock issue and how to solve it welcome My name is David. Yes, I would like to introduce to you that in Ubuntu Cloud Server, there is an issue we have encountered. It's very interesting but very complicated. So I won't go deep into this uh, like uh, assembly, but uh, I will talk about our concept in debugging. Yes, I hope you can learn a lot from it. So let's continue. So this case, uh, if you want to want to see the detailed case de description of this, but uh, I think that uh, yes, this is provided by Bagzida. The whole process I have recorded in it. You can click it open and view it yourself. So the problem is that of our biggest client, his machine only have over a hundred CPU use, but it has uh, like a 5 GB memory. A hundred, a few hundred, five hundred and twelve GB memory. And uh, the NUMAD is enabled, and uh, there will cause a bit and hit. Yes, the NUMAD D is enabled, and uh, the few M's. There were some lock uh, lock up in it. So I like to go inside and check it. So if you up it, we use the key dump in the VM. We can see that. The lag is in the SMP core function. Yeah, if you see this line, it means that it is stuck on CPI because TOB is unlike uh, the ordinary thing in Messi. It uses the, it will be flushed. Yeah, it is stacked. 
you can see in this line that it's stuck. But why, why API? If it is sent, then it gets stuck because it's waiting for another CPU. For example, I'm CPU 0 and there is another CPU 1. And they want to flash it, uh, the CPU. I want to when it is finished, it so as to, for me to continue running, but it's stuck here. And uh, there is no response from that uh, CPU. This is what you can see from the film. And uh, when you're investigating it, you can see that Linux, what, five years ago, they've been developing this for a while. They've seen there's an IPI loss, including people from, from Ingomo, and uh, they give us some configuration, and we ask them to test it. And uh, the, well, we search for a long time, but we haven't come to a conclusion. Yes, we can't find why the IPI is missing. We need to wait for it for a long time. And it's missing. So, I have a write a page, written a page. Yes, if I throw it, and I will wait for it. If it doesn't come back, I will interrupt message. If I interrupt ACES, I will send the IPI. So, if I think the resend hasn't come back, then I will send it again. So, the problem is not what I thought about before. When you are debugging it, you can see a lot of discussions going on. But you just trust your eyes. But I. It's like when you, you find IPI missing, you think you need to reflect. Am I right? Because the probability of IPI missing is that low, but uh, why have do I have this kind of problems? So maybe I'm wrong. I shouldn't uh, search, refer to the VM. I should uh, refer to the host because the client won't provide us very detailed information. If you, yeah, some of the clients, the, to the thing they told us is not true. You have to analyze yourself whether it's true or not. But the client, uh, they depend on you for the help. So I look to refer to the host side. I ask ch check it lock. It's key down. So luckily, this can be wrong on the testing machine. They can be verified. So, this is not a production only system. In this testing environment, we made it. When we enabled the NUMAD after two to three days, it emerged. Yes, it's running very fast. When we reproduce it, you DM code to hit it. You can echo C. To, and they were, it will crash. It will start the KESC. And uh, if you enable panic and app, if you enable it, yes, it will panic itself. And you can find the VM code yourself. Yes, I'm trying to acquire the VM code. Yes, but how do I find what's in it? But why do I know it's BT? I backtrace it. There is the instruction code for each under the crash. So for each BT, if you pop it into a other file, and it will fill script. And uh, if you filter all the stacks, and uh, the remaining ones, you can see which one is idle, which one is still working. So what we want to find is that who is working, who is constantly, constantly working, and who just stays idle. 
because in one case you are just uh, get a lock and you will stay idle, but uh, the whole system is waiting for this app to appear. And uh, so I found some code traces. This is KSMD. KSM, you can see that it can call procedure management. If you want to, we want to expand it to memory. You will just group all the similar pages together. Yeah, to merge them together. And uh, you can open more VMs on from the host. That's uh, being done by a lot of manufacturers. This is the KSMD. It was locked. The RWMC is uh, similar to the one Ben has mentioned. Uh, yeah, this is the first uh, victim is locked. Another one is the K huge page D. What is the huge page? Huge page. I think its page four will become less and less, and its TOB missed, uh, missing possibilities will be reduced. Yeah, you can check it yourself later. So if the K page is low, if you enable it, it, it turned it into OS, and uh, they will check it will have some continuous. If you have both sides, it will merge the full page into two layers and to make it uh, two PDE, because when they are screening these pages, it will get stuck on the SAAM, and uh, you cannot tell which the victim is. And the third victim is QEM. This is a virtualization. When it is running, KCM arc and call and enter and into the instruction and get to the guest. But there's a, something happened. The VMSC, the, it appeared. And the two dimension four. Yes, these are the for the last page four of the VM. When we want to connect it, it, it is get it gets stuck. Yes, there's KSM, huge page, and the QEM, these are the three victims. So we want to find the who's, who's the killer, who gets the key. And this, this one, this is the most important part. The client told me that uh, when I enable Numa D, there was something happen be something happening. And in the beginning, you won't think too much. You may think that Numa D is nothing to do with it, but it has something to do with it. So we find the bad tricks. It's Numa D. So what's it for? It's the auto balance it's of Numa D. Yes. We want to check if it's a remote access. If it is, then we will move the page into the local one to make the memory less latency become reduced. This is his backtrace. It found in his node. It happens to be a KSM page node. So it wants to migrate this page to SM. Yeah, Numad D wants to make migrating pages and it happened to find the KSM page. And uh, when, but it, there's an issue happening during this process. Yes. When the migrating page if you want to migrate the page from this site to another one, to the business node page, but the page is with another node. So you need to have this M app action. If you want to change PD, the TOB cache will be updated, need to be refreshed to be refreshed from page table and uh, from step by step. And uh, we have um, just mentioned the conclusion. 
Yes, if you want to migrate this KSM page, it has a two, over 200 uh, AML pages, so they cannot be copied by one single machine. Yeah, over 200 AML pages, they are merged into one page. So I will skip the details. If you're interested in it, yeah, we have already uploaded our PDF. You can see my disassembly analysis because I will talk about two to three hours if I go into detail. Yes, how to get back the documents. It will be very complicated. So, yeah, how to solve this problem? You need to get the thread of it. KSM has two trees. One is stable, one is unstable tree. So when we're merging them, so the page, if it's not stable, you cannot merge it immediately. So if you just go to ESS, so it will, page 4 will happen instantly. So we will place it first in unstable tree, and after it has been screened twice, if it's not changed now, we will place it in a stable one. So we need to look at the stable tree. We can see three, the same pages, if they are merged into one, and they are put in this stable tree. All the PTEs, they are merged into one page. The linking is has over two million. Um, and uh, if you want to migrate page of uh, 2.3 um, so if we need to send IPIT, and uh, yes, there are so many complicated times. It will take a long time. I have told it. I have a list for the crash in a uh, command. Yeah, follow these procedures. You can see it. So, I like to KSM and Numa balance. What is it is about? You can see this picture. If I want to process A, it were it was put in the CPU zero. If the process A, if we want to go to the SSS, there's there's a new mode, new mode SS, and uh, the latency will become longer, and. Uh, if the process A, it needs to be put in the local node. So nobody is doing this. Yeah, if it will try its best to migrate back, to migrate back. If you are process E, if it's in CPU 4, but the SSU, you can see. On these two pages, they have two pages. So if the, there are too many pages on one node, I'm not just migrating page to this node one. I think if we want to schedule this to another CPU in node zero, so you might balance it has to, wants to migrate node, wants to migrate process. But it's not that easy because you want to migrate the process. Then the CPU queue, what's it? What's about its loading? Will the loading be affected? Is it enough? So that's not the key point. I want to keep it clear. When the new MAD is enabled, there's a new MAD balance. And the page happens to be a case and page. When the, the pages merge together, they are over 200 MB. So they need to do the TOB fresh, and uh, it causes the performance issue. And uh, if about this performance issue, like the Brandon Greg, 
They have done the CPU graph. Yes, when IPU is refreshed, you can see the NumaD. You can see the migrate pages. Migrate pages. And uh, yes, these are the key points. You can see the bar is too long. When the work, work, what is work? The MM. Yes, it's reverse MVP. The ones whose PTE is. And uh, you do the IPID. And uh, this one is, is AF is here. The total uh, AF is here. So how can we do it? Yeah, we want to shorten it. The upstream does not have a code. In 2015, Zhang Pinkley, he proposed it, but uh, was rejected by the Hill Kings. So he wants to shorten the time. And uh, if you can see our discussions, we send this the same graph to him. And after a few months, the page was KSM on the merge list was shortened. Yeah, the whole process, uh, the whole story is about is like this. And uh, because Ben Shushu asked me here, he knows, yes, you can refer to this because no, nothing can be obtained from online telling you how to do it in detail. Yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, the time is already up. Half past two, so uh, ten past two. So time is limited. So uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to communicate privately. <laughs>